This is MRN Out Loud on MRN.com, presented by Bloomin' Mondays at Outback Steakhouse. And also brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to an MRN Out Loud edition. It's our post New Hampshire Motor Speedway edition. I'm Joey Meyer. You can follow me at Joey Meyer. It's original. Hey, but inside we have a non bald guy sitting in for Woody Kane, who's on special assignment. It's Daniel Hemrick. Good morning, sir. Good morning. And the, the bald statement's a little loose. So yeah. I have a hat on well, because I didn't want to be shining. No, that's, 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 you know, it's education is what this is. <laughs> that's right. Experience. Uh, we, we, we broke a couple of records yesterday, so we got Kevin Harvick's first win and your first last place finish. How about that? Yeah. 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 I mean, so we, we have a... bookends right there, but uh, not exactly the way your first start at New Hampshire wanted to start. Yeah, that's exactly right. I thought we had a, a really good Okuma America Camaro Z01 and... Kind of cruising around there, running inside the top 15. Felt good about it. And, um, yeah, so I guess a nine had a water pump failure of some sort. Laid water down the racetrack. I saw it. Got to the right side. Suarez pulled out from behind me and hit the water, hit me, and ended our day. So. End of the day. Done. Uh, an amazing weekend for Hendrick Motorsports. That wow. was that was an unusual with all the failures and the wrecks. Uh, we were all trying to think about the last time we saw uh, one team use three cars. And I think – we went back to, I think Ricky Stenhouse did it in the Xfinity slash Nationwide Series back in Iowa, back in 03, 04, something like Goofy, uh, a long time ago when they used three cars. But uh, that's the first time I've seen a cup car in a long time where they actually pulled out a backup car. from. So, so to that note, in practice, um, when the 88 had their second issue, yep. their second car, they didn't get to use their full allotment of tires. Right. So a lot of teams will do, if you don't buy your full allotment, yeah. And guys can't transfer enough tires over. Other yeah. teams have the option to buy those tires at a discounted rate. Yeah. They said, hey, the 88's got a set or two of tires. I said, nope, time out. We don't want anything that's <laughs> from that organization this weekend. <laughs> we don't want no tires, no right. nothing. So, um, yeah, that was that was a tough weekend for those guys. But um, it's cool to see, though. I mean, right, like all the team guys, they mm-hmm. rally. It was cool to see all the different shirts from, from that organization helping get those cars ready. So Yeah, well, something we haven't done here in a while in the last couple handful of weeks is uh, the little Joey is happy because it yes. is a blooming Monday this weekend because Kevin Harvick come home in his mm. top spot, uh, hadn't won all year long, and then made it in dramatic fashion. So get over to Outback, and, and I love blooming onions. They're great. I do too. Sirloins and stuff like that. I probably so like it too much. Little Joey's happy this weekend. That <laughs> makes a good choice. Uh, Rodney Childress is another one that's happy. Yes, he is. You know, I imagine that's uh, going to work out. I'll tell you what. Let's see what Kevin Harvick had to say post-race at New Hampshire. Yeah, this place is, has been really good to us, and I think Rodney and I probably feel like we should have, could have, should have, could have won them all, um, but it's been a, a racetrack that that um, you know has been here, sit right here, uh, has been has been really good uh, for us from a performance standpoint. I think um, you know from a confidence standpoint, coming here this weekend, um, being able to adjust on the car and and you know know what we're looking for. I think this is this is definitely a racetrack where a lot of those things came into play and used a lot of the same things that that we've that we've used in the past as far as tools of of how we make our car go around the corner. So uh, there was a lot more relevant this weekend to the things that, that we've done over the past few years and still very different. I just told him, I said, we were leaving on a tow truck or winning a race today. So, you know, I, I think it's just that point in, in the way that racing is now. You, you, um, you know, with all the chances that you have to take and, and whether it's from strategy or blocking or pushing somebody out of the way, I mean, he did exactly what he was supposed to do. I feel like I did what I was supposed to do to, to try to win the race. It just, you know, when you're in position, you you just have to lay it all out there and see what happens. And today we came out on the right side of it, so I don't have to worry about what would have happened. Not only his 46th career victory, but his fourth at New Hampshire. And ironically enough, you don't think of Kevin Harvick being dominant at New Hampshire. He's tied for the most with Jeff Burton. Four wins at Loud New Hampshire. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, I saw that before the race where he was talking about it'd be cool to try to tie the record. And yep. um, yeah, it's four wins. That's a big deal. Yeah, and that uh, that bears trouble for us because Loudon is the similar track to Phoenix. Exactly. And uh, a lot of teams yesterday that ran good or ran bad will take that information, either use it or say it doesn't work when they go to Phoenix. Yeah, you're right. I didn't, wait, but one thing else he keyed on was um, talking about how this weekend they were able to use some of the tools that they would in the past to yeah. make their race car good, and we found the same thing. So um, 
no matter what package it is, I thought that applied this weekend. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about uh, Loud New Hampshire and your experiences there, and we'll be back after just these breath messages. G'day, America. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. That's right. Outback delivery is here. Now you can enjoy all your Outback favourites anywhere. Our signature centre-cut sirloin at home. It's here. Or game day party platters with kookaburra wings that'll have both teams cheering. It's here. Or steak and lobster for a date night at home. It's here. Head over to Outback.com and place your orders because Outback delivery is here. Outback Steakhouse. Aussie rules. Delivery availability varies. Delivery charge may apply. Smell that tire smoke and race fuel? For some, it's a toxic smell. For us, it's intoxicating. It's the smell of Kyle Busch's eighth season win and Truex's comeback at Pocono. The sweet smell of Eric Jones' first Cup Series win. Take a deep breath, and if you smell it too, you're family now. 2018 was a great season for the Toyota Racing family. Buckle up for 2019. Follow us at toyotaracing.com. Toyota, let's go places. NASCAR is a registered trademark of the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing Inc. It wasn't just built to be a museum, it was built to be a shrine to the history, heritage, and future of the sport we love. Visit the NASCAR Hall of Fame and see how Petty, Earnhardt, and hundreds of other NASCAR legends became heroes. Watch their most electrifying moments, experience realistic racing simulators, and much more. Plan a trip to the NASCAR Hall of Fame in Charlotte. Tickets at NASCARHall.com. NASCAR Hall of Fame. This is our sport. This is our house. Back live, sitting here in Concord, North Carolina, at our MRN Concord studios with Daniel Hamrick, who's in for Woody Kane, who's on special assignment. We always got to do that when we say special assignment for some reason. I'm not sure why. I don't yeah. know why either, but he he, proper. he always did it when I'm going. That's it. It's special, like it. it's special assignment. You. Uh, first time racing Loudon, New Hampshire. You you qualified. You you beat half the field in qualifying, right? That's a good way of looking at it. But it was your first time. How did you prepare for Loudon, New Hampshire for your first time? Oh, my gosh. So much preparation. Um, obviously, we've been wrapping our arms around this this package in itself, but we thought this would be a place that maybe we could use those tools like Harvick was talking about earlier. Yep. And um, I think a lot of those really applied. So as we went through our simulation, I spent a ton of time on simulation, spent a ton of time actually watching some of our, our Phoenix film from earlier this year. Um, some of our, um, you know, kind of like Pocono 3 and 4 flat flat style racetracks and trying to key off certain things and tell my crew chief going in, you're like, man, well, why are you using those racetracks to work on New Hampshire? Because of the package, because of the, the similarities of, of what you look for from a balance standpoint. So spent a lot of time diagnosing those things and dissecting that to hopefully unload them and be good at New Hampshire like we uh able to do once come race time when we mentioned simulators and simulations a lot of the engineering uh, is based on computer-based simulations but you're actually mentioning driving simulations how many laps do you think you made on a simulator before showing up there probably 500 yeah. at least at least yeah. 500 I, and that's you know just on race week you know you're kind of doing some tidbits here and there yep. weeks prior just to give the teams an idea on their build process how they're going to go about preparing the race car that way they're not thrashing on, on monday tuesday wednesday of race yep. week so 500 plus, um, and it, it does it does relate. Um, the hardest thing we find with simulation is trying to get the tires right. If for some reason if the tire model is off in the, on the driving simulators, then it's hard for the teams to get a direction, and uh, this week it actually correlated pretty well. Yeah, you mentioned the tires at Goodyear, and one of the things that frustrates me is watching these races is that I always felt that if a car came down pit road and took four tires, he should beat the guy that took two. I agree. And if the guy that took two should beat the guy that took none and stayed out. And, and we didn't see that at New Hampshire. There's a lot of strategies that you, know, you come down pit road and, and you're actually giving up track position to take four, thinking you can get it back, and it doesn't work out that way. Goodyear has their hands full. I, I understand the last thing they need is a tire failure, right? So they're always bordering on we need more grip versus getting rid of heat, uh, making them wear out and, and not letting them wear out and not failing. So it's that borderline. When you're – Training for a loud New Hampshire, is it always on four tires? It is to a yeah. point. Um, you know they're getting better at being able, being able to implement tire fall off and tire wear. Yep. The issue with that is is we're not seeing as much of that nowadays. So right. that's where it becomes tough. You're not seeing the grooves change as much. You're not seeing the racetrack you know take the rubber. And that's the that's a constant battle, right? That we're all we're all kind of arguing from the driver's seat versus what the teams are pushing Goodyear for. And 
And, um, you know, you grew up short track racing, you're exactly right. You take four tires, you're going to beat that guy with two tires sure. and no tires all mm-hmm. day long. And, and we're not seeing that transpire. And that's for sure what is the exact opposite of what won the race. Um, so as we're going through these motions, we're trying to make that more and more realistic. But it's a, it's a, it's a tough uphill battle that uh, we're all facing for different circumstances. As if it wasn't enough variables to throw in, the track ends up using this PJ1, this spray, the yep. juice, the goop, whatever you want to use it. Do you like it? You know, <laughs> this weekend without it, it probably would have been, honestly, not, not a very good race because the air is so sensitive. Um, it, it gave us options, although it didn't give the options that we thought it would. Yep. You know, the, the drivers, and myself included, were, hey, we've sprayed the juice on the bottom lane and the third lane, left the second lane or middle lane, you want to call it, untreated. Why not we just carry that third lane up to the fence? But for some reason, over maybe being treated the last couple of years, that third lane, something was different where we could not overstep that third lane. Right. You did. I mean, you were gone. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd be curious to know when the last time there's that many backup cars pulled out in practice in happy hour. Because it was, I mean, pure ice if you overstep that boundary. So I like it to the point, but also becomes, if you're eating race cars with it in practice and whatnot, it becomes a little bit gimmicky. Uh, we just got to, I think they're honing in on, the, on what that concoction is and, and how to do it effectively. And guess what? We get another shot at this weekend with the juice at Pocono. At Pocono, it's interesting how they're going to try to widen that track out. But one of the confusing things about it is, is, is their goal is to make the track wider. But when it creates a faster line, Everybody uses that faster line, that's and that's exactly what, right. and that's what really the dilemma is. It and, and notice that that it we used to when we didn't spray the bottom, you could run that higher line and maintain that radius all the way around. Well, now when they run the bottom line, you guys are making that huge turn in the center and driving from the center lane, the third lane down to the bottom, which was faster. Which that made almost no room for passing. It was really difficult. It looked it, like it was it, short of being in the guy's door. It made it extremely difficult to to get position and hold position and then not be lose two or three trying to gain one. And that was a tough part. It's kind of weighing in those options. And, and you're right, with, with this package and, and what we're seeing, we saw it at Kentucky, we saw it this past week. We may see it again going to Pocono where, yeah, our corner speeds are higher than ever. So then we spray that stuff and those corner speeds increase even that much more and it becomes that much more of a deficit when trying to pass somebody. It takes you that much longer to complete the pass because the guy that's in that stuff, majority is going to prevail because his car feels better than the guy below him without it. So – uh, it makes it way, way more crucial to be on your toes. Um, I think it does help some of the restarts, give you a lane, something to catch you. If you get out of shape, um, you're not going straight to the garage with a quarter pound tore off of it. But, um, man, it can be frustrating when you're racing at these places and, and trying to trying to chase it, trying to know when it's activated, when it's not. Um, so it's a constant variable we're all trying to figure out. Yeah, the Foxwoods Resort Casino 301 was 301 laps. You only got to run a little over 100 what do you think? That's depressing. Yeah, no, but, I mean, but how were you for the first hundred laps? You know, I, we started the race off a little, a little on the edge, waiting for air pressures to come up. Um, and right about lap twenty, twenty-five in that first run, I thought, man, I, I think I have something going on here. I, I can really pivot the center, um, late center, and, and drive underneath guys. And we were talking about guys taking that really big, long, big arc and, and turning across the bottom. Our car would get there quicker than most, and able to slowly but surely move forward. And um, we got the fourteenth there, and. We've caught the 48, which is a good guy to be near on the yeah. racetrack, right? So we're we're uh, slowly but surely working him over whenever we had our issues I talked about earlier with the, the nine car having the water pump issue. So um, I was proud of, of what we had for a race car because I didn't think, you know, we were nowhere near where we needed to be on speed all weekend. And to turn that into what could have been a potentially, you know, top eight, 12 day, um, that's what our race team needs to be doing right now and um, getting to the end of these races and hate tearing race cars up. But we um we have some positives we can take out of it. Yeah, you didn't do anything wrong. I mean, you know, I mean, it wasn't like your fault. I mean, so that's good. Either way, you're the guy holding the wheel. Yeah, that's you don't true. like bringing them back tore up. Yeah, but that's it was, true. It was good to at least have some some speed throughout the race. All right, we're gonna take a quick timeout. We'll come back and break down a little Pocono and possibly talk about the uh, Xfinity race. It really wasn't that big of a race, and we're giving away more stuff. We're gonna give away. We gave away a free blooming onion already, which is good. And we can do a free set of tires. Like we can do tires, mm. Hercules tires. They're giving away a free set of tires every month, and that's easy enough. You just got to register at HerculesTire.com. Use the slash with MRN. So that's HerculesTires.com slash MRN. And we'll be right back. G'day, America. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. That's right. Outback Delivery is here. 
Now you can enjoy all your Outback favourites anywhere. Our signature centre-cut sirloin at home. It's here. Or game day party platters with kookaburra wings that'll have both teams cheering. It's here. Or steak and lobster for a date night at home. It's here. Head over to Outback.com and place your orders because Outback delivery is here. Outback Steakhouse. Aussie rules. Delivery availability varies. Delivery charge may apply. Here's your chance to win a set of your very own Hercules tires. Go to HerculesTires.com slash MRN. Simply register, and each month we'll give away one set of tires. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading mileage coverage to get you wherever you need to go, no matter where the road takes you. Register now for your chance to win a set of Hercules Tires at HerculesTires.com slash MRN. Hercules Tires, ride on our street. Hey guys, Corey the Joy. Join me and my friends Lauren Fox and Daryl Ma on the Sunday Money Podcast as we talk racing. What happened in California? Like, what was that? You know? Yeah, they all sat at the end of pit road, waiting for one guy to be the sacrificial lamb, and none of, nobody wanted to do it. And just life. Did you fall in love on TV? No, definitely not. I could not. Plus, you never know who might stop by. Young Ryan Blaine is here with something in his hand. I brought you our script because you guys are like our show. So it's Sunday Money on MRN.com, iTunes, Spotify, or wherever else you listen to podcasts. <laughs> You know, we like to talk about Monday racing, you know, armchair quarterbacking, and, and uh, Saturday's race in the Xfinity side, there really wasn't a race. It, it was, no. we saw uh, during practice the, the spotters, and we all have timing and scoring. He, Christopher Bell was three tenths quicker than the field, three tenths. So, lap to lap, it didn't matter. Yeah, and he led just about every lap except for some small scenarios where he wasn't leading and he drove right back to the front. It was a dominating performance for him. You know, he, he's, only one, he's only been there twice. That work out for him. He's won twice, <laughs> yeah. so he, he he really likes loud New Hampshire, uh, New Hampshire Motor Speedway. He's been good to those guys uh, in that Ream Watch Toyota over at JGR. So it's it's kind of that makes it easy for us to talk about because it was yeah. it was a race for second. Uh, we were able to finish fifth with Paul running our last uh, Xfinity race with him. A little controversy. A little bit of controversy. Yeah, it, uh, it's the senior senior group against the junior group right <laughs> yeah uh, and, and paul was trying to go look man i, I just want you to pass me i don't want that's you right, to beat right. my fenders off but now we get to go to a completely different track uh with pocono the place was designed off of three different racetracks uh our longest straightaway and we talk about it every time the front stretch is longer than some runways that i use when we fly around on it's that long and now we're not shifting so it's incredibly long for you guys but we go back for the second time for you now but they've added the spray. Yeah. So in preparation, what do you do? You just try to key off the things you thought you could do good the mm-hmm. first time you're there. The things that you really couldn't do good at all, you really got to focus on that. And um, it, it's, it is still the same racetrack, right? If, if you can, the fast cars are going to prevail. The cars that react and do things well you know, are still going to do that. So you got to figure out how to get your car to do the same thing. And and um, I think the spray will just kind of even closen the race cars up even more. Will it make options? Eh, I'm not gonna, not gonna say it will or not until we see it. But I, I think um, you know it'll definitely put a bandaid on over ill handling cars for a couple of laps, and it could be one of those deals where it lures you down a road to where you think you're better than you really are until you get into the race. So it's still gonna be a, a big focus of maximizing that front straightaway, getting off of, of turn three. And um, being able to carry gas. We saw Kyle. When Kyle won there the last time, he could carry so much more throttle than everybody else. And with that package in particular, with low horsepower, you've got to be in the gas. So whatever we can do on our 18 to be able to stay in the throttle, that's what we need to do. Yep, you've picked up 10 spots from the previous race. You qualified 23rd. I believe you finished in the 13th spot. What problems did you have? And then what were you really good at? Uh, traffic was, was our biggest uh, downfall. You know, I, I could run really fast lap time in comparison to the field at one point. You know, I think with 30 or so to go, we were leading. We led 10 or 15 laps there through strategy. And as and, uh, soon as the car in front of me peeled off, I think it may have been a 95 to hit pit road, we literally picked up half second of lap time just by being a clean air by ourselves. That's huge, right? So what were the what were the differences? What did my car do different? It just had better overall grip, not being in traffic. So trying to figure out how to make our cars not so receptive to the car in front of us, which is kind of the, the drinking word of the year, I guess you would call it, is how do you make your car not have that big shift? And uh, that's what we got to focus on going there. Yeah, we start seeing these racetracks for the second time. We're essentially halfway through the year of a 36, 38, 39 race season based on 
if you count the All Stars and the Bush Clashes and the Opens of that nature. Yep. Um, you're currently mm-hmm. leading the rookie standings, 25th in points. And you look at the drivers you're around, you want to be happy. How do you feel that 2019's been to Daniel Hamrick in the eight car? I feel like we've we've had our moments and glimmers of hope that have at least kept us completely off the ledge. Yep. I mean, but we've also left so many points on the racetrack and. And um, I feel like personally, I've not done a great job on restarts. Feel like I've lost a lot of time. I mean, these guys at this cup level, you think you've got a lot of stuff figured out. Xfinity racing, you go cup racing, it's a it's a rude awakening. But for the better, right? You want to compete against the best guys. So I've left a lot of a lot of spots here on restarts and been slowly but surely getting some of those back. But when you look forward, um, the days that we've had those glimmers of hope, we have so much potential. Uh, Luke Lambert does an incredible job of leading this group, really myself and my spotter Brandon Lyons were the only two new variables to that race team. They've been together for a couple of years. So kind of plug and play, you think it's going to be simple, but we've, we've had to do this transition and make this transition with a lot of other variables with this new package and just trying to figure each other out. So moving forward, I think there's so much uh, that we can do. If we just have solid weekends with not making any headlines, I think we're a, a solid top 12, 15, 15th place race team, and we haven't got to get there yet. So this weekend, I thought we were on the verge of doing the same thing and just uh, hasn't worked out. But once we hit our stride and put races together, I feel like we can we can move forward pretty pretty productively. I always find it interesting. Uh, you and I worked together in the truck series, and, and when you were driving those trucks and we talked, you felt like you were giving 100%. Man, you're driving hard, hard, hard. And then you go to the Xfinity series, and you're like, oh, my God, these guys are driving <laughs> so much harder than I am. Yep. And, then you, and you learn, and you pick up, you you. you reevaluate what your hundred percent is. And mm-hmm. you're like over there, I, there's no way I can drive any harder. And just like you said, now you're in the cup side and you're like, these guys are driving so hard every corner of every lap. Is that something that still amazes you? Are you becoming, have you reevaluated your hundred percent? I have. And to the point it's almost, um, you know, I kind of, I don't want to take a step back here, but what you keyed off of is when you got made that first jump into a truck, you're, you're used to, you know, 150 lap, four tire only, sh- you know, short track, super late model races yep. where you're saving your stuff. They drop the rag. You're easy on the gas. You're easy on the brake. You're taking care of your stuff. You're not, you don't do any of that in any of the top three <laughs> series, right? You get four tires. All you got come down pit road, another 40 laps, you do it again. And that's magnified each series you go through. And, and it becomes to a point where it makes you so much more crucial about how you attack practice, how you attack your race runs, because it's easy to get in that system where you're trying to baby the car and take care of it and minimize wheel spin. But at the end of the day, it's my job to go drive the race car to the absolute limit and for the team to give me that limit and increase our speed and grip at that limit. And um, it's easy to get kind of set back and settle for what you have. Um, so that evaluation of your 100% has to be also put into the race car as far as what you're asking of it. And if it won't do what you want it to do, you have to address that. You can't just settle and know, okay, I'm going to be better on the backside of the run. Well, with today's day and age, there's really not much of a backside of a run. Yeah. You've got to be able to take off hard, stay run where you can run hard to that edge, and be able to come down and get four tires and do it all over again. If you can't do that, you've got to make progress on your race car. One of the things we've seen over the period of years is everybody was complaining Kyle Busch was coming down out of the Cup Series and running truck and Xfinity. But one of the advantages you have now with your time available is you step down, if you will, and you yep. go run the slingers and the red buds of the world. Is it easier than it's been? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, I don't either. No, right? absolutely not. And, you know, getting to do a couple of those races over the last month or so, uh, you know, running the Red Bud 400, running the Slinger Nationals. Slinger Nationals by far is one of the coolest places I've been to, by the way. Right. Never been there, never experienced that race. But the game has changed a lot. I mean, I've been out of it four or five years now. It's um, how you go about making grip and whatnot. It is still that style of racing, but how are they? how they're going about it. Even that side is, has been engineered to a totally different level than what I ever expected to get to. And, and um it was cool to go back and be able to reconnect with some of the short track world and, and, uh, no, definitely not easier. It's, it's harder and closer than ever, just like everything else is. Um, everybody's getting closer in, in their competition side and it made it that much more challenging, but that much more fun. But mentally with your running that new hundred percent evaluation in the cup side, does it make you, do you feel like you're more ahead now than you were five years ago, six years ago mentally? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. I think if not, then I haven't been doing a very good job right. because um, some of the things you probably run, you know, back in the day, if I'd have ran a 15-lap run to really fill out what I had, you do that in three or four laps when you right. get back because you realize, okay, I can't run the limit I need to. I need to work on this thing or work on what I'm doing. And um, I think it may, makes maybe the race, you know, the physicality of the races, you know, all that stuff. It, it makes you be a little bit of a step ahead, but at the end of the day, you got to make grip and you got to make good decisions. And you got any more of those late model races coming up? I got one more, one more. Um, you know, 
pretty pumped that RC let me jump in these races mm -hmm. and go and run the Dixieland 250 okay. at Kakana. Uh, coming up here, I think it's the week, I think it's the Monday and Tuesday after Watkins Glen. So we're coming off some road course racing, go do some short track racing, and try to have some fun. Never been there either, so look forward to checking the place well, out. Well, last time I watched you online, you had a kind of a unique crew chief slash spotter arrangement. Is that still working with the, I think you married her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, she, uh, she is now full-blown in the role just making sure I, I got, and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing on the weekends. But, um, you know, when I go run those races, it'll be uh, Chris Wimmer, which is Scott yep. Wimmer's brother. He's got a really successful super late model team. And, my wife, Kenzie, who, who was a racer, and she spotted a time or two for me. Road course racing, which was always fun. Um, she's uh, she's taking the role of just supporting me, which is uh, way better for the, for the house life. I don't have to hear about what I did wrong, at least on the radio and at home. I can only get it at home, so it's funny. see a lot of new announcements with drivers and kids and things. Where does that stand? Yeah, that's serious. I'm still in the practicing stages. <laughs> <laughs> they say you got to do it, what, is it 10,000 times before you're good at it? Then he's started 10,000 races. Yeah, right? well. I'm still yeah. practicing. So, um, no, it's cool to see Tyler Reddick, my teammate, and uh, his girlfriend, exactly. longtime girlfriend, Alexa, say they're having uh, their first child on the way. So, um, Kenzie and Alexa are pretty good friends. So, when she shared the news with us, it was pretty pretty special. And I thought they were going to be scared to death, but I guess Reddick's pumped. He's excited. He has – what an improvement this year. Oh, my God. It's so – he is so fun to watch. It is. He is so fun to watch. Now, his results on Saturday, again, Christopher Bell dominated the field up in – up in New Hampshire Motor Speedway, but uh, watching him and the two car guys, the the three headed monster that's gone from the Cup side we had last year to exactly. the Xfinity side this year with with uh, Christopher Bell and, and Custer and Reddick is, is just amazing to watch those guys. Um, but now he's going to be a dad. That'll be pretty cool. Yeah, it will be cool. It's it's funny to talk about the days you and I working together. Yeah. Yeah, he was my teammate then, right. and and seeing him uh, seeing him turn in and be able to put races together like he has with Randall Burnett and that two team has been pretty cool to see. Yeah, we're going to take a quick timeout. We'll come back and uh, look ahead a little bit to Pocono and possibly some Xfinity races in Iowa here in just a couple of minutes. G'day, America. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. That's right. Outback delivery is here. Now you can enjoy all your Outback favourites anywhere. Our signature centre cut sirloin at home. It's here. Or game day party platters with kookaburra wings that'll have both teams cheering. It's here. Or steak and lobster for a date night at home. It's here. Head over to Outback.com and place your orders because Outback delivery is here. Outback Steakhouse. Aussie rules. Delivery availability varies. Delivery charge may apply. It wasn't just built to be a museum. It was built to be a shrine to the history, heritage, and future of the sport we love. This is our house, the NASCAR Hall of Fame, and it's packed full of classic and present-day cars, including Petties, Earnhardts, and Waltrips, as well as interactive experiences, realistic racing simulators, and much more. Plan a trip to the NASCAR Hall of Fame in Charlotte. Tickets at NASCARHall.com. NASCAR Hall of Fame. This is our sport. This is our house. MRN's Classic Races. Labonte gets crossed up. Labonte goes around. Dale Earnhardt now watches. Labonte spun across the line and got the win. Spanning 50 years of NASCAR racing. Barney Hall. There's a beautiful afternoon here in Daytona Beach. And the action will be fast and furious. Legendary voices. Legendary races. Daryl, simply, what happened? I just hope he chokes on that 200000 That's all I can tell MRN's you. MRN's Classic Races. Available on MRN.com, iTunes, and your favorite podcast providers. He did, he did touch you. No, he knocked the hell out of me. Welcome back to another edition of MRNs Out Loud. We got Joey Meyer sitting in here. We got a whole more lot hairline sitting over there with Daniel Hamrick because Woody Kane is where? He's special, he? special assignment. assignment. Special right. assignment. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know where he's at. Exactly. But uh, he's he's investigating something. So we now go back to Pocono for the second time. We're gonna put PJ one down. How much time will you spend in the simulator again? for this Pocono race? I've really already done a majority of my simulation. Uh, I'll, I'll get on it once or twice before we head out there Thursday afternoon. Um, actually, no, it's Friday. We don't leave till Friday this week, Correct. right? Yeah, we race. This weekend. Yep, yep. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be on it once or twice just to reevaluate our packages, but we've been building off of it since we were just there a couple of weeks ago, and I don't want to get too many preconceived notions in my head before we go, but the biggest thing's going to be getting a lot of laps and figuring the PJ1 out. Yeah, a lot of the configuration packages, big spoiler, low motor horsepower, brake ducts, but one of the largest things they've changed is the gear ratios. Are you missing? I mean, would you have wanted the shift? I know you don't have a lot of time at Pocono. Would you have wanted the shift or not really? I always said I was extremely pumped to finally get in a cup car and go to Pocono and shift. 
Right. Guess what? Never <laughs> got to it do away. it. So <laughs> it took it away. Um, I got to experience some of that with the Xfinity cars restarts one and two, or especially turn one. You would do a little bit of it, but I was looking forward to that yeah. road course feel of an oval, and um, never got a chance to do it. So I, I do miss it. I, I wish I could experience it, but um, at the end of the day. We're all in the same sandbox, so we can go have some fun. Yeah, no, one of the things that's unique about that track is from the air, you don't realize how tight turn two, that 90-degree turn is. Yes. And you guys were going over 160, 70 miles an hour down there. Um, it's a big, big corner to make a big mistake, but also you gain a lot of momentum referencing turn three. Yes. What corner do you want to be good at? Uh I mean, everybody's yeah. become so good at all of them. I, yeah. I feel like you got to maximize. For I look back at the race we just ran, right? That's the freshest thing I can reference yep. to. And we were extremely good through the tunnel. I felt like probably a top five car from a speed average all weekend um, from, from maintaining speed through the tunnel, through turn two. But got down to turn three and couldn't do anything with it in traffic. So um, I feel like if you get the balance where you can throttle up with this package and get a huge run down that front straightaway, You've got to be able to do that, and uh, you got to focus getting off turn three, just like you have in the past. And um, in one, in turn one, you just got to be able to finish the corner. If you can just be okay and not just have a huge time delta, I think there's a there's a lot of lap time to be had at the other ends of the racetrack. But a lot of risk and reward through that turn two. I'm you, telling you, a lot of risk versus reward. You were able to make two starts in 2018. One of them being at the unique Charlotte Roval. Between now and Homestead, what race excites you? And realistically, what are your goals? Oh my gosh. I honestly, I know it sounds, you know, you can call it what you want to call it, but we're going back to these places as a group for the second time. Mm-hmm. I have every race circled, you know, okay, this is what we can do better. This is what we know we have a lot of capable, capable of doing a lot of things. Our mile and a half program has been really fast single car. I think we're honing in on the balance uh, of what we got to need to race um, and road courses, right? You know, making my second start at the Roval had a lot of speed there last year. I think Luke Lambert does a great job of giving me what I want at the road course stuff. So, I'm um, looking forward to just everywhere, man. Just fortunate to be driving a race car, fortunate to be doing it at this level. So I'm pumped to go back and give these places another shot. That's awesome, man. I appreciate you coming in this morning. I hate your 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 New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Your first ever start there ended up in your first last place finish. Yeah, tell me about that. Yeah, yeah a little tad bit of information. But yeah. um, the good thing is it's Monday morning. I got to see your face. Yeah, so that, that brightened it back appreciate up for that. me. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Well, we have a full week of MRN scheduled uh, NASCAR Live Tuesday at 7 p.m. And all of this can be viewed on MRN.com, which is kind of cool. The Gander Outdoor Truck Series uh, race at Pocono is Saturday at 12.30. Cup pole qualifying Saturday at 4 p.m. Right away, jump over to the Xfinity race in Iowa, which is Saturday at 4.30. And then we finish it off on Sunday. Gander RV 400 Cup Series race at Pocono starts at Sunday at 2 p.m. Thank you very much, Daniel Hemrick. I'm Joey Meyer, Woody on special assignment. He'll see you next week. Before we end the show, uh, we want to send our condolences from the entire MRN family. Uh, The industry lost a fantastic crew chief with Nick Harrison, who passed away Saturday night. Our condolences to his family.